partly keeping an eye on this just in case it comes too close to Florida is Lieutenant Governor Carlos Lopez Cantera. Sorry, I misspoke before, no but great to have you here, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, we're going to talk about Florida and the reelection bid there for Governor Scott. Now, for folks who live in Florida, they may have noticed these campaign commercials already on TV. The biggest issue both candidates seem to want to talk about right now is education. I know Governor Scott has a lot that he can point out to for, uh, for in terms of success on immigration, but he's also created a lot of jobs or getting, is getting credit for creating a lot of jobs. Why is the campaign talking about education here? Well, education is an important issue. Everybody cares about what happens with their children. I have two young daughters. One of them is in the public school system. And Governor Scott recognizes how important education is and how it leads to an educated workforce that then attracts businesses to the state to, that then create jobs. Uh, Charlie Crist, our likely uh, opponent in the, in the November election. Unfortunately, he fabricates attacks against Governor Scott because he doesn't want to talk about his record as governor because Governor Scott inherited a mess from Charlie Chris where we lost 800,000 jobs. We had an 11.1% unemployment rate. State budget had a $3.5 billion hole. And he doesn't want to talk about Governor Scott's record of cleaning up the mess of bringing 620,000 jobs to our state, a $1.2 billion surplus in our state budget, and an unemployment rate that's dropped to 6.2 percent. So what is he, what's he left with? Attacking. And, you know, I think the voters are smarter than that. Now, outside of Florida, some folks would say that the Scott administration is, is getting some attacks coming from Attorney General Eric Holder. Uh, recently, uh, Holder sent a warning to Scott saying, we are watching you. He says the DOJ is carefully monitoring Florida's upcom uh, upcoming elections here. Governor Scott was responsive, though, when people complained uh, the last time around of long wait times. He did some things to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is just more kind of election year uh, rhetoric coming from the attorney general? It, it, well, it, you know, it seems like that because the, the mitigating circumstances that were passed uh, subsequent to the 2012 election uh, have made voting better in Florida. And the the law that existed prior to the mitigating circumstances was approved by Attorney General Holder's uh, Department of Justice. So it doesn't make sense that he criticizes a system that is even better than the one he had already previously approved. It, it's, it stinks of election year politics, unfortunately, and Charlie Chris seems to be the puppet of the Obama administration now, and, and they're doing whatever they can to help their guy. Lieutenant Governor, you mentioned that you have children that are in the public education system little ways off from being in college, but Rick Scott passed the bill back in 2014 and it actually went into effect in July. The new law says that undocumented students in Florida can pay in-state tuition as long as they meet certain criteria. What are your thoughts about that? Well, the governor's been very clear throughout his uh, tenure that he wants to keep tuition low for all students. And he's recognized that kids that are graduating with uh, mountains of debt this it, in this uh, 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 state that we have and in our country leads to obstacles for them to live the American dream. So he's been consistent and this bill actually did great things. It lowered the cost of a Florida prepaid college plan by $20,000 and I have a one-year-old and that's important to me because we're gonna we're about to get into the market for one of those plans. Well for people who are not familiar, familiar with the bill just so they have an idea of what we're talking about can you talk about how the law works? Florida allows only 10 percent of the university system to be non-residents once they cap is reached even if an undocumented student meets all the criteria they will have to pay out of state tuition. I'll let you explain it better. Yes, there is a cap. Only 10% system wide are allowed to uh, take advantage of the in state pot. Uh, this bill also eliminated the ability for a 15% tuition increase and a CPI increase every year. Those two things were eliminated in this piece of legislation. And the previous governor, Charlie Crist, increased tuition three separate times while he was governor, and that's led to increased costs for our kids who are graduating today. So does this, like, based on a first-come, first-served basis, merit base? Uh, It'll be decided right. in each university amongst their individual uh, administrations. But with the cost of tuition being so high, some students might feel like this is an unfair advantage that these illegal immigrants are getting. And well, that's an therefore increasing the cost of tuition for them or their children. Well, it's important that we keep cost of tuition low for everybody here in Florida because uh, if you ha graduate with too much debt, it makes it difficult to be able to get a good job, keep a good job, or and live your dream. So that's, that's what the governor wants for Flo all Floridians, is for them to be able to just get their education and then get into the workforce and be productive members of society. Well, you know, education is a hot button issue in, in particular Common Core and things of that nature get brought into the conversation, but also another former Florida governor, Jeb Bush, voice, voice support for class action lawsuit in New York against teacher tenure. Mm. Uh, is this something that uh, 
Governor Scott and, and former Governor Bush agree on? Well, we've already eliminated teacher tenure here in Florida. It was a law signed by Governor Scott in 2011. Okay. Uh, it was vetoed by Charlie Crist in 2010. He used it as a springboard to launch his independent race for the United States Senate when Marco Rubio was, gonna, was clearly overtaking him in the Republican primary. So uh, across the nation, we've seen a growing amount of discontent with teacher tenure, recognizing that it is a hindrance uh, to making sure that our children get the best education that they deserve. What do you think is the biggest challenge for Governor Rick Scott? As far as in the next four years? Just, uh, there are the some polls that are suggesting, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are some polls suggesting that Chris has a lead. So what would you say is Rick Scott's biggest challenge right now? I, I what does he have to do in these next few months? I think we're gonna continue doing what we've been doing, is traveling the state and talking about the governor's record. Nobody can deny that Rick Scott, when he ran in 2010, said he was going to focus on jobs in the economy, and he's kept his word. We've added 620,000 jobs in our state, and our unemployment rate is down to 6.2 percent, almost five percentage point uh, drop, and we're leading the nation. In, in June alone, we added more jobs than any state in the country. So we're going to continue doing what we've been doing, talking about our successes, cutting taxes 40 times, including a $500 million tax cut this year, putting dollars back in the hands of the hardworking men and women of Florida. But is that enough? I know, Bachman, you've brought this up before. Um, talking about charisma, sometimes charisma can win over voters. Some people have criticized Rick Scott saying he doesn't have enough charisma hmm. versus Charlie Chris. Well, the better governor clearly is Rick Scott. Um, we saw in 2012 the more charismatic candidate uh, mm -hmm. is the one that won the national election, and we see what that's turned out now. Um, voters now clearly recognize that they made a mistake and they would have elected Mitt Romney in 2012. So I think voters are more keen on records and what a candidate can do and what a leader does, and leadership does matter. Voters recognize it because I've, I've been traveling the state and I see it. Are you going to call Mitt Romney and have him come and help campaign? Uh, well, uh, I'm, sure thought about Romney, it because I'm sure Governor Romney is, is, uh, is uh, excited about uh, seeing Governor Scott reelected. Uh, Governor Romney knows firsthand that Charlie Crist is a, is a traitor and a liar because he lied to, to Mitt Romney, lied to Rudy Giuliani, and he lies to everybody, unfortunately. And, and that's the danger of electing a, a person like Charlie Crist, who you never know what he really stands for. He only stands for what he's saying at the moment and who he's talking to. And you mentioned earlier that Charlie Chris is still technically running against Nan Hayworth in that Democratic primary. Nan, so Rich, we gotta, yes. Nan Rich, I'm sorry, but in that Democratic primary before we got to get past that. But mm -hmm. it, you know, assuming the poll numbers hold up, and it is Charlie Chris versus Rick Scott. We talked about education, we talked about job creation, but what is the other issue that Governor Scott really wants to highlight to to, to draw a contrast between him and Charlie Chris? Leadership. Um, Charlie Chris has a record. He was governor for four years and it was not an admirable record. Charlie Crist increased taxes, cut education spending, and oversaw a budget that had a three and a half billion dollar shortfall. Governor Scott has cut taxes, increased investment in education. We have a three billion dollar reserve here in the state of Florida and a 1.2 billion dollar surplus after cutting taxes 40 times. He's proven that conservative fiscal policy works, recognizing you put a dollar in the hands of the private sector, they know how to turn one dollar into two, whereas government usually takes one dollar and turns it into 50 cents. Oh, good point. And fair enough. And, uh, you know, so we look ahead here. The leadership issue is certainly something that Governor Scott I is going to highlight here. And when the debates start happening, what do you think is the, is it, you know, uh, uh, moving away from Charlie, Re Charlie Chris' record on the economy, of course, that was during a time when we saw the, the Great Recession starting to sink in here. Governor Scott made that promise of 700,000 jobs, I think mm -hmm. he said. Yes. Where is he right now in that uh, total? 620,000. We're almost at 700,000 in less than four years. And, uh, you know, Charlie Chris is going to say, well, it was a global recession and it would have happened to anybody, but I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. Look at Texas. Rick Perry, a guy who was focused on jobs in the economy, added 200,000 private sector jobs in Texas when Florida lost 800,000 jobs. Leadership matters, and it could have been done. It was not impossible. You know, I just want to go back to, you were talking about the education being the focus of some of the ads. You don't usually, <laughs> of course, as we're hearing the music go, um, you usually don't hear Rick Scott talking, Governor Scott talking in his ads. Is there a reason for that? Is there a strategy behind that, that he's not actually speaking, but you see those ones where Charlie Chris is actually talking to the camera? Is there 
some strategy behind that and actually can you answer that in 20 seconds in 20 seconds well, I, think those are, I think those are issue ads by outside groups right one, one, but we did see governor scott uh with his grandson in the one ad so he is talking we yes. know they are working on getting him out there in front of those right. cameras more often but the election rolls on okay thank you very much thanks john lieutenant Miranda. governor thanks Great so much carlos lopez thank you so cantero much. sorry for thank asking you. a question with only a few seconds no to go problem. that wasn't fair our time <laughs> is short of course we can continue the conversation after this break uh, we'll have uh, more coming up here on America's Forum. You can check out the interview as well coming up very soon on Newsmax.com with the Lieutenant Governor of Florida and what issues are really driving voters in that gubernatorial election.